Bring you it. know that one good weakness is killing it. <laughs> okay. It is very weak to death. That right, really I'm it. not a necromancer. That doesn't help. I don't have um, power you get the kill. feeling that there are no explicit vulnerabilities. Um, you get the feeling that you probably can't deafen it with how often it's been around like its own thunder. You get the feeling it's probably immune to both thunder and lightning since it creates it on its spot. And you get the feeling that it is probably rather durable and that your best bet will be you were actually gone while this happened, but the general called out to the men at the back of the ship to ready the ballista with harpoons and to bring it down. I was hoping for an actual thunderstorm because then Serena could have broken the encounter by using call lightning. Oh no, there's actually a thunderstorm going on. Oh, damn it. There's actually a thunderstorm going on. Well, it's still completely useless because Serena can't use it for anything. Actually, yeah, it would have been completely useless because everything is like immune to lightning. Exactly. No. There is a you way. know what? Just because it seems to be the bigger threat, I am going to see if I can slow it. Okay. Gonna cast slow on it. I expect you're also probably gonna try to hit these two orbs down here. These you could probably catch it in the same region. These two, yeah. Yeah, so you could catch it in the same region. So let me roll save. What save is that? That's a wisdom? Yep. Yeah. Thunderbird! Fail, fail, fail. Makes a save. Uh, uh, what about the orbs? Lightning orbs. Doot, doot. Both fail their save. All right, bird. This is a war. Uh, Half our party is almost useless against this bird. Serena's completely useless. She can't stab a fucking bird. <laughs> All right. And that was one of my two level threes. Yep. Next up will be Fulana's turn. Or, well, actually, Serena could use Guiding Bolt at level three. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Get a little bit higher ground. Get out of the center of the ship. Um, can I do that? Uh, yes. Stand up. One, two, three, four, five. Was she prone? Was she she prone? did go yes. prone, yes. So half move. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> Longbow. Going to take a shot at the bird aiming from me. Alright, so you're shooting at the bird? Okay. Damage its wing enough? It's going to have to go down. Here, shoot your longbow. I hit attack. Oh. <laughs> That'll hit, dealing 11 damage. It doesn't look like it slowed it down at all. This thing is huge. <clears throat> oh, don't worry, I'll keep, keep taking pop shots until it just... <laughs> until you run out of arrows. Yeah. Oh, well, it's bound to happen. Yeah, Mara will spend her turn to stand back up. And she'll kind of see exactly what's going on, like how all the concern is about, like she heard the general call out to ready the ballista, and she'll kind of get the feeling that that's probably something that she wants to make sure that they can do, so she will aim at this one down here to try and kill it, hopefully. And I don't believe she has advantage on it. No. So it won't, but there is an ally within, yeah, so that will have sneak attack damage, and that will kill it. Does she have disadvantage from being in melee range, or does that... I, I, still I assume that, that was when you attack something that is in melee range. So okay. if you attack like this, like if she was attacking the one next to her, she'd have disadvantage, but I don't think she'd have disadvantage against this one. Okay. Yeah, that, that rule's a little weird to me. Yeah, it, it is weird. And that'll be her move, and I don't... Wait, she's a rogue. She can disengage as a bonus action. Mm -hmm. So she's going to disengage and take a step back and away onto higher ground. Baron's turn. He's going to work on keeping the front of the ship clear. So he's going to go over here and he's going to whack this. Is this thing just spawning a bunch of these or are they just a or are they just a lot of these? Man, he likes to crit. Oh, there are a lot of them. That, that's oh. the thing. There's just a lot of them. Well, we'll he throws something off. Um, let's see. With that one gone, um, She's going to fire two shots, one at this one and one at... Uh, you technically cannot see them. 
This entire platform here in the center is raised. Okay. So I won't be able to see them. Um, so I'll, I'll fire at least the first one at the one below me. Okay. Uh, way, way below me down here. Yep. Yep. Let's see. I will use another because that's miss by one, evidently. Mm hmm. That'll hit. Dealing some damage. Yeah. Crap damage. Also, something I just noticed from the great for the Baron used, he rolled two ones and a six. So, technically, one of those ones should have been re rolled, I think. Did it cheat the system again and, like, only roll one die more than it should have? Yeah. Um, I'm not worried about it. It killed it still. Yeah. All right. The way that Sorry. The, what you need. The way that I do it, because you only. I, I, I know how you. Like, I'm gonna yeah. go through and change it right now. Actually, I, I know how you're doing it, and I know why you're doing it now. Yeah, it's really annoying. It was um, just something weird I noticed. Thank and you. Lily is gonna move up in that general area. Yeah, she did the second attack as well. Yep, that's uh, twenty. Yep, and that would have hit, and that would have done another five damage. The thing is still alive, barely though. Now this thing's turn. The Thunderbird is going to fly away out of the distance and it's going to loop around towards the left. The various orbs. I'm going to have GM layer. To the token layer. Quick Two more question. orbs here. Would you say the bird is outside of 150 feet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so two more orbs appear on this side of the ship. Oh my god. Don't worry, there is actually a limited number of them. <laughs> the limited There's number just... is 150. Yeah, and they're both going to move forward to attack the dwarf, or to attack the baron. Those two aren't going to move. Good otherwise, etc., etc. So, I don't remember how many I'm going to have, so I'm just going to keep rolling attacks and use them as necessary. Mm. Okay, so, first off, against the two against the dwarf here. Going to miss, going to miss. Because he has slightly better AC than that. Against the Baron. Gonna miss, gonna miss. Good job, Baron. Against Dwarf down here. Gonna hit for four damage. Against Dwarf down here. Gonna hit for six damage. And that'll be it. So the Dwarf's turn again. And Oscar is just going to run further down here. He can't actually get to defeat the last one. But, yeah. Bunch of dwarves are going to gang up on this one down here. I mean, run. there has to be something for the dwarves to do instead of just sitting around randomly. That's yeah. why there are all these bloody... Ugh. Yeah, to be honest, it's part of the reason why. And bringing the Thunderbird down is only going to be half the fight. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through the attacks. This one here will be killed by one of the attacks. This one here is going to end up taking like another three damage. This one up here will be hit for two damage. And then it's to Serena's turn. And while this is all going on, he yells out to the uh, the general yell out to the group behind him. Get ready, it's coming around. All right, I wanted Man, to use. I a... disrupted you. Uh, you said it was coming in from the left. It's currently flying to the left, but you can make the assumption it's coming around to swing in from the back again. Can we get this dwarf off of the center of the ship, like off of the high ground? All right, Serena's going to prepare an action to use Guiding Bolt at third level against a uh, big lightning bird when it comes back. You can move by him freely. Okay. So, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right, we're good then. Yep. Yeah, you can move by him if you wanted to. Next up will be Azul's turn. Azul will run over to this thing, and Azul will just kind of try to attack it. And that's going to find Azul's tab. Azul's tab is this one. I have too many characters, even with everything. Uh, bite. Yes, bite. Cool. And a flurry as well. Good job, Azul. These things have a stupidly high AC. 
Ballista counts as a ranged weapon. Yeah. So technically it's deck based. Alright. And next up is Lana's turn. How far out is he? Or is the Thunderbird? I'm going to say the Thunderbird at this point would be about 200 so feet out. I can hit it with Scorching Ray. Yeah. You can go ahead and roll an attack, roll at it. You're, I'm going to say you don't have disadvantage because this thing is glowing with electricity. You know exactly where the crap it is. It says range 120, but I just looked it up and I have it set up wrong. It's actually 240 thanks to my feet. Yeah, yeah. alright. So first one will hit, second one will hit, third one will miss, so it's going to take 14 fire damage. 14 damage is 14 damage. Right. And then Alana is going to fly... Probably one, two, three, four, five, six. Over there. How far out is it? It's about 200 feet out. Plus whatever your distance is to it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so I assume it's currently out somewhere past these. <sighs> off to the left of the ship. So, yeah, next up is Polana's turn. Have anything that kind of reach? Probably not without Spell Sniper, to be honest. Longbow would have disadvantage. Because Longbow is 150, 300, I think. Oh, that. I think it had. Fireball is 150, but I wouldn't have it crapped. 90. Uh, that's like the wrong work. Actually, it might work, but that would be interesting. You may just you want to clear out the rabble. Because the cool. the best idea would be to use the ballista, and then we got to clear out the enemies down at the bottom first. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know what? Run with some blade. Okay. So you're attacking uh, with the sun blade. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, you know, a nine. And you miss. Surprising no one. <laughs> no, 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 I fumbled. That doesn't count. <laughs> uh, All right. I fumbled, uh, it doesn't count. And next, totally counts. She, yeah. she clicked it wrong. <laughs> yeah, next up will be Mara's turn. Mara will run over to this side of the thing. She'll take aim at the one that Falana is distracting with the glowing blade. And she'll try to shoot it. And she'll miss. Next up will be the Baron's turn. The Baron is just going to take a whack at the things in front of him. Whack, whack. Damn, whack, whack. And that'll hit. And that'll do 13 damage. <clears throat> Alright. Now, Lily's going to take out her greatsword because she finally can. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to whack at this one, I assume, with advantage? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, she'd have advantage for flanking, and that'll be enough to kill it. Okay, and that was three movement. So she'll come down to this one and whack this guy. Without disadvantage. Or without, without advantage. advantage. Yep. So she'll miss. She'll miss. Next up will be all of their turn. Let me move you all the way back down here because you're coming up from another pass. So this thing will be coming up currently along this way. So anyone with a attack of opportunity or with a um, attack of opportunity, a, a prepared action can unleash it. <laughs> cough, cough, Serena, cough, cough. You just muted yourself, Earth. Damn it. Screw <laughs> <laughs> sure my headset sometimes, okay? Yeah. All right. All right, we're good. All right, guiding bolt, and since I used it on third level, I need two d six more. Yep. Oh wait, I need double braces. And that will actually hit. Oh my! Damn it. Twenty. That's the best two d six ever. Yeah. So mm. it'll and that'll hit, and it will take twenty damage as it goes by. And at this point, <clears throat> the two of the ballistas will turn and fire at it as well. Next attack has advantage. One has advantage. Yeah, first one has advantage. I rolled two 18s. I'm not rolling again and fill with a second roll. <laughs> okay. So both the ballistas turn and they streak forward, impaling the Thunderbird through both of its wings. And I said it does a lot of damage. 
You said 2d12. If oh, did right. I? Yeah, I did say 2d12. You, did you, say you it was 2d20 first, and then you reduced it to 2d12. No, it was 2d10 initially, and I was joking 2d12, so that's going to be oh. 14. Ooh, nice. 14 and 22. Damn. Oh. Wait, did how, I... did 20, how did 2d10 get that? It's 2d12 I used. Oh, okay. Do and, they uh, have anything attached to them to drag it down, or...? There are ropes attached to it, and as the Thunderbird keeps flying forward, the ropes get drawn taunt. Everybody, except the Lana, make a deck save. Hee <laughs> uh, Dex, 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 dex. Well, we're going off overboard. I think Lily made it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably not. She probably has a disadvantage for some reason. You're probably I'm going looking over at a fifth. No, you're looking at for a sixteen. Ah, Serena went over. Oh shit, Serena went over. Serena is near the center of a ship. Uh, let's see a little bit. It'll be okay. Zul or I gotta roll the general. All right, so you're looking for a sixteen. And if you happen to roll an 11 or less, you're going to get moved. So just let me know who fails and everything. Falana has 11. Oh, conveniently, <clears throat> the number I rolled. All right, so Falana, what happens is as the lines get drawn taunt, the entire ship lurches forward. The back end get lifting up. So everyone who failed the save of a, looking for a 16, you have fallen prone. Falana, you get sent in. I need a D8. One, two. You get sent against this bulkhead in the way. Oh, yeah, you get sent against this bulkhead in the way and you fall over. So you're going to take D6 damage. I'm waiting for you to roll that. You're going to take. There we go. Five damage. Oscar, he's going to fall prone. Actually. He can add his charisma because of things. So could Azul, but I think Falana was out of reach of that. Ten feet. Ten feet. Was Falana within that ten? Falana feet? was definitely yeah, within she was that right range. Here. Yeah, yeah. Falana was in that ten feet, so she would have. She wouldn't have failed with that bad of a thing. She would have get five health back, and you don't fall, and you only fall prone. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. And, you can kind of see like there's this aura emanating from him, and it just kind of makes it easier for you to pass these saves. So he falls prone, a bunch of other people fall prone, and the bird is on the ground at this point, prone. And it's just kind of twitching. Its wings almost look like they were bent the wrong way. Oh, it's prone. <laughs> oh, no. It's slowly going to try to lurch back up to its feet, and it's going to attack the nearest things in front of it, which is going to be a dwarf... And, and the Baron. Baron. Yeah, so it's going to start off with by pecking at that dwarf. And it hits. And the dwarf survives. But not very, he is not in good condition. The you other said you one, were going to drag some healers up. Like six we already did. I was did. going to at some point. I never did. So I'm just going to drag this entire section of people up. <laughs> Everybody get in on this thing. We caught a big haul tonight. And These guys will be down here. Time These two will run up at this step. That'll be good enough. Game. The other one was going to attack the Baron with his talons. Oh! Crit. Crit. Oh, Baron's dead. The Baron will take... This wasn't the worst crit it could ever be, though. There were There were ones. There were a lot of lowish rolls. And this was the weaker attack. He's going to take 35 damage. And he has to make a save. He has to make a strength. No, he doesn't actually have to make a save. He's just grappled. Oh, Jesus. He got eaten. Oh, God. No, this is... Like, it bites at the one dwarf on the ledge. And it's one of its talons reaches out and grabs the Baron, squeezing him as they crush into his skin. Well, is going to call. Job, we need Lily. a medic over here. All right. Um, well, you're supposed to be a bodyguard. <laughs> no, the other ones that are attacking. I'm just going to keep rolling shock, a crap ton, and I'm going to see how many are actually going to hit. All right, so start off with the shocks I rolled. That'll hit, that'll hit. That'll be 18 damage to this dwarf. 
Good job, Dorf. I think this Dorf is going down soon. Probably. <laughs> this poor dwar- these poor dwarves. They've mm-hmm. dealt with so much. This one down here. What's Lily's AC? Uh, it's 19. Nin- 19. That one will hit Lily for 12 damage. Lightning damage. Uh-huh. Also, now that I think anyways. about it, on yeah. the last turn, were you kept factoring slow for these two things? Uh, they weren't actually moving, and I don't know if I actually had them be attacked. I'm really taking this very rough because there's so many tokens on the board. Yeah, I was mostly trying to slow him, so dropping slow won't even really affect much. Yeah, um, the only one I actually have left is down here, and that one was going to attack Falana because she's prone. And oh. it will hit her for 7 damage. She's not prone. She, she was knocked prone. prone, she didn't get sent to the... Oh, right. Yeah, she was knocked prone, she just didn't get sent flying. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me. I'm going to move some of these dwarves around because they got sent flying. Some of them did. Whoa. And the dwarf got sent flying even for, or the gnome got sent flying even further. Yeah. All right. That'll be it for that turn. So now it's the dwarves' turn, and they are all going to essentially stand up. These guys are going to get on the harpoon, make sure it's ready. He's going to come over here, and he's going to finish off this damn thing. No, he isn't. Probably not. He's going to finish off this damn thing. <laughs> no, he isn't. <laughs> <sighs> Doing good, General. <laughs> Doing good. Doing the best. He didn't even hit. It's not even worth using Divine Smite. Um, pretty much all the dwarves here, given the chance, they're going to try to move into a position to attack the Thunderbird, who is kind of... Sp- Geared all over the uh, ship, so it's very hard to miss it. So I'm just gonna say they're probably gonna get like four hits. I should keep all my D10 handy. I should just keep all of my D10 handy. So I'm gonna say they're gonna get four hits. Three, three. So that's ten. Nineteen damage to the Thunderbird. All right. And then it's Serena's turn. Yay! Serena actually does something. <clears throat> Serena can move? What? No, Serena's been doing stuff. I apologize that it's taking so long. I have so many tokens. No, it's fine. All right, Serena's going to use... It's only five of her movement to stand up, to stand up it's right? It's half your movement. Oh, half, so 15. Uh, and this is where you all laugh at me for not ha- ever having a ranged option. You can't actually get up on there, the yeah. bird. I can see. I can see the bird. Bird's the word. Bird's the word. Bird's the bird's gonna die. <laughs> I'm saying. Let's try this again. Uh, Keep in mind, it is prone, however, so you'd have disadvantage taking it from range. God damn it! You can dash to get closer. You know. Hold up. Uh, one. Center so... of a bird. No. no never mind. Oh, uh, Fireball the bird safely. That'd be 15. amazing. No, it's not quite big enough to fire bird just fireball just the bird. <laughs> you did that on purpose. So right? Serena's just gonna um, move. That and, was and... not intentional, but I'm very glad that happened. <laughs> yeah, Serena's just gonna st- just gonna move a little bit because she. she uh, I don't want to waste another level uh, level three spell slot. If that's you your dash? if that's all your action, you can dash to keep moving. The only closer. attack spell that Alana actually has prepared. But she can get in range within next turn, so why dash and get in range of damage? So you get oh, an attack of opportunity when it tries to fly away. Okay. Yeah. Alright, then let's dash. Okay. And then next up will be Azul's turn, and Azul is gonna... Azul will dash to here. Actually, no, Azul can move that far. What about Azul is a freaking monk. Azul monks, will... are, monks are speedy. Yeah, Azul will use a key point to run to here. So that's gonna be down another one. And Azul is gonna... Gonna fire, gonna fire, bite this, this. Om nom 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 nom. Fire He's gonna om nom nom, 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 nom on his nom, drumsticks. Nom. <laughs> That'll hit. Fire damage. That'll hit. Super fire damage. Extra attack will miss, and she's not gonna flurry of blows because she is gonna use things the fire snake on two of her attacks. To do do. do. Wait, did you actually make make Aswell a female? Yes. Uh, okay. Out of curiosity, how is Azul getting a third strike? You know when she used bonus already? Because level 5, they get extra attack. Oh, no, you're right. She didn't get that third attack. You're absolutely right. I thought Azul was level 5. Well, yeah, but I did three attacks. And she used bonus she action used bonus dash. dash yeah. oh. oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're out of key now, too, right? 
Yeah, that would put out her key as well. I messed that up. So yeah, that'll be the last of her key, and she will end up doing six, nine, eighteen, twenty-four damage. You get the feeling this thing is about half dead now. Alana's up. The Firebird is still prone. Uh, not Firebird, Thunderbird. Yeah. And learn lightning bending. Can she hold her turn until it stands up? She may hold an action to attack it once it stands up. Well, basically, the thing is, once it stands up, she's going to hex and then scorching ray it. You can't hold your action. I'm gonna or hold your like entire turn. I'm going to say, but you can hold the action. Okay, so I'll just spend you the bonus action. I'll spend hex. the bonus action now to hex it then. Yeah, you can still hex it as the bonus action, then you hold your action to Scorching Ray when it stands up. Yep, so these two things are going to not be slowed anymore. Okay. And she's going to get off to the side to avoid it if it tries to fly away. Yep, alright. Falana's turn. Die, you motherfucking bird. It's within range, I should have sight of it. You're attacking the bird? Alright, that's going to do seven... 9, 12, 17 damage. Alright. Is that it? Yes, I am in full melee range. Yes, I have that damn thing on me. I am yeah. yep. Alright, Mara is just gonna... She's gonna realize attacking it's a terrible idea, so she's gonna attack the one that's uh, next to Falana because that thing is... She'll hold her, att She'll hold her attack to attack the Thunderbird when it stands up. The Baron is... He's going to try to break free because he does not want to get pulled with this thing when it flies away. That sounds like an absolutely terrible idea. Mm. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. We can kill it while it's been airborne. And, you know, he, and he actually it. manages to break free of the grapple. But he's not going to move away from it or anything else. And he is going to... Yeah, you... Second wind, which I hope to God I actually set up on him. I think I did. I did. Cool. Gonna use second wind to get some HP back. And he's gonna action surge, because why not? So we're gonna miss. Does he have, what, do he, what do he have advantage on that? It doesn't matter. Prone. It doesn't matter really, it's but I. Oh, yeah, it is prone anyway. And second attack, and nice. Technically, he would have disadvantage if he's prone. He stood up. Or he okay. wasn't prone at all. So that did 24 damage. Yes. Yeah, 24 damage. 36 damage. Yeah. I'm also kind of glad you talked me into making him a champion because both the crits he have have been on 19. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Champion, so good. Little Not that that little penny gets <clears throat> fight. I would like to rage. I will allow it. <laughs> and I'm going to ignore this stupid little thunder thingy next to me. I'm going to run All up right. here. and Smash, smack, smack. Smack, 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 smack. Uh, okay. Action surge. Let's see, one rage is gone. I'm okay with the action surge being used here. Yeah, like, I don't think anyone could object to this. And on this last, or on the third one, because I'm not 100% sure if the last one will hit, on the third one she's going to uh, do triple hit, attack. Hit, hit, and hit. Oh. Everything hits. So let me count the damage now. So she'll do 15, plus 2, plus 2, <laughs> plus 9, plus 5, plus 11, plus 4. I feel like I missed one. 13, 1, and plus 2. Four, uh, 13, plus 3, plus 8. It's dead. 72 damage. It's not dead. Uh, did you get... Yeah, you got the 13 plus 2. Okay. Yeah, it, it took a crick. Really, at this point, is just hacking away with it with her flaming gray sword. You can smell, like, burning... You can smell chicken... <laughs> that was real good. It's making you a little hungry, to be honest. Lily's just kind of screaming. Ah, she hacks away at this thing. All right, and this thing... No, that's her stomach talking. <laughs> We're having chicken tonight! 
All right, now this thing at this point, it will spend its action to stand back up on its turn. And at this point, we're going to have an attack of opportunities go through. Yay. Or not attack of, not attack of opportunities. We're having um, a lot hold, of uh, held actions. Oh, held actions. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Ooh, crit. <sighs> well, I was going to have it do something, but there's no way it survived. Sneak attack has, uh, has crit as well. Which isn't yeah, like I said, I was gonna like, let me put it this way. Mara alone has killed it. Alana <laughs> alone has killed it. Also, add that 3d6 because I'm pretty sure the first three attacks hit. Uh, the first three attacks would hit, yes. So, so there's an extra 3d6. Out of 3D6 curiosity, damage. here's 3d6 for, uh, for the crit uh, sneak attack as well. Out of curiosity, I'm just wondering how much damage it would be. <laughs> okay, so, in essence, as a stream of fire in this crossbow bolt from behind, excuse me, this crossbow bolt from behind catches it in the back of the head. This thing, that was a horrible roll on the crit damage, by the way. This thing will <laughs> take, let me, let me work the damage out. 11 plus 8 is 19, plus 9 is 28. Plus 5 is 33. Plus 13 is 48. 49. Plus the 13 on 49 is 50. 62. 73. This Willie. thing had 21 health left. This Willie. thing had 21 health left. <laughs> 21? We 72 by ourselves, and those two together did 73. I think that's great. Well, to be, to be fair, fair Willie also did used two, essentially two turns. two turns of attacking, yeah. so it kind of evened out. Yeah, but yeah, so this thing is super dead. Super dead. And as the Thunderbird falls, the varying remaining orbs try to run away. Tax of opportunity? Killing the son of a bitch now. Yep, you have attack of opportunity on it. <laughs> Does the dwarf that the uh, things ran away from have attacks of opportunity? Oh, Oscar's going to have an attack oh, of opportunity. Oh, hey, look, that's a natural one. Does this dwarf up here get at least one? This one's dead. That dwarf up there is going to get one yet. Yeah, I'm going to roll his special because he, he kind of gets that honor. <laughs> I'm waiting for the natural one. He missed. He didn't I... roll a natural one. He actually <laughs> rolled a nine, but he still missed. I had the natural one. Yeah. Uh... And these ones up here are going to get away. And as everything calms, like, as everything dies, you see that everyone is still pretty much on high alert, trying to make sure that there's nothing else. And the storm, as the Thunderbird screeches out its last cry, seems to calm a little bit. The waters are still a little rough, and everything else is a little off, but it appears that the danger has passed. Is there anything on this Thunderbird that we can use for magical items? Oh, there's probably a crap ton you can use from this Thunderbird. You'd have to roll yeah. a few survival checks to harvest it. How many? Um, a few. I'm, I'm going to say three, and as you're sit, starting to harvest it, Oscar will walk up to you to check on the status of everything, and he'll kind of poke the Thunderbird with his, um, with his maul. In the future, perhaps someone other than Lily should roll survival checks, because uh, I don't actually have proficiency on that. Just... I have, a plus I have one a negative odd. one to it. But to be honest, as well, you didn't roll badly. I rolled yeah. amazingly for that. <laughs> yeah, and as yeah. Oscar will go up, he'll kind of poke the thunderboard with his maul, making sure that's actually dead, and he'll get a head count on everyone there. And I'm actually surprised that everyone lived. If the thunderboard had attacked more directly versus that lightning, it probably would have killed people. But I wanted to roll it this way, and I did. Lessons learned. <laughs> <sighs> But he'll poke at it with his maul, making sure it's dead, and he'll kind of address the group um, assembled before him. And he'll thank all of you for helping to defend the ship from this strange attack. And he'll kind of mention that if you wish to harvest it, fine, just make it quick. I'd like to get this thing... Hmm. Actually, no, this will make quite the trophy. Harvest what you can, but try to leave it mostly intact. If I may offer a suggestion. This thing has, does have a lot of meat on it. The food on it might be edible. You know, Nod, yes, we can get a lot off of this. Food, I'm sure the feathers can be useful for something, and look at the claws. Like, the talons on this thing are easily bigger than the dwarf next to them. Well, he's going to turn to the general and say, you glad you brought us now? <sighs> you know, Nod, I... 
we probably wouldn't have done this if it weren't for the year aid. Alright, what does she get from the survival checks? <laughs> Alright, so from the survival oh, checks, you're going oh, to yeah. be able to harvest, I'm going to say probably a dozen feathers, which still, like, you can, as you touch them, you feel like a static charge going through them. They still have, like, a charge of electricity in them. Um, in the gullet, she's going to find a, like, strange smooth stone that it ate at some point, though it feels like that one's also charged with electricity she'll be able to use as well if she wishes. It'd probably make a nice wet stone if she really tried to apply it that way. Um, she'll also be able to harvest the talons to a degree, though there's, like, nothing exceptionally special about them aside from the fact that they are a talon that are huge. Like, you could probably... Cutting one of the toes off, you could probably use that as a weapon itself. How many do you, does she get? I'm going to say she'll be able to get three of the talons. Okay. It's like three claws, essentially. <clears throat> and everything of the sort. And it's it's kind of been late in the... It was late in the night when this happened. Like, the night... It, not even midnight when the combat ended. Um, and okay, he's gonna. I'm and he's going to make the note. It's like, all right. All right, everyone. We're keeping watch, making sure nothing else sneaks up on us after this attack. And he'll kind of just start dismissing or giving out orders for all the doors. And they kind of mill around, everything taken care of. The various clerics you see around are tending to those wounded, uh, making sure that nobody's, like, hurt too badly. Lily is going to... Lost. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Lily is going to make sure the Baron gets his rest and is going to... Uh, Maybe if a cleric turns to him, she'll wait for that, but she's going to lead him down below if he allows um, to. I expect the the one of the clerics will go forward to tend to you both first initially. I'm not really going to worry too much about healing because you're going right into a rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like at this point, everyone can pretty much just go down below decks and get to the rest. We can well, I mean, just in case, you know, surprised they didn't attack the ambush or Something I do here. The dwarves are not going to ambush us. No, however, it doesn't mean this is the only enemy out here. Oh, yeah, I missed one. He's dead now. And yeah, of course. Well, we'll here's the thing, Risu. If yeah. he tells us we're going directly into a rest and we don't need to worry about HP, it probably means we don't need to worry about HP. That's my guess. Eh, never. Because what if we get erupted in the rest? Risu, stop. Risu, if he says we don't have to worry about it, he's a DM. We don't have to worry about it. So yeah, it's a nice my. DM. Yeah, yeah, I've already I, I, I think I've proven lie. very often that I'm <laughs> rather nice at times, despite the fact that I can throw nasty stuff at you. Like, The Rock, if you didn't have, if it didn't fight quite like that, and it could have caused a lot of damage, potentially, but the way I had it fight, you didn't really have to worry about it too much. I would rather use a level 1 spell slot in second lane. Then be interrupted mid rest because the inside. Go ahead then. I'm, I'm not stopping you. If you want to heal for one up, go ahead. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> it's not going to matter at the end of the day either way, so it doesn't worry me too much. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're going to be able to harvest all that from the Thunderbird. Uh, going back on, let me scroll back out. Daytime. Lily might ask Falana to identify some of the stuff if she's willing to. Let me actually go through now. We don't need uh, identify it these up anymore. Uh, something to do. Specifically that uh, the gullet stone that he talked about, the feathers and the talons, I have a feeling probably aren't that magical, but uh, I mean, besides from being a, latently magical. Put down, feathers, put down feathers might make for great guides. It, it's good them. materials, if nothing else. Yeah. So I guess... Uh, you could probably identify one of them. They're probably all the same. One of each of Pretty them. Pretty much. And they'll drag the carcass back to here so that Thanks. they can like, properly work on it. And that's the biggest open area on the deck. <laughs> the most delicious one now. <laughs> <sighs> um, but yeah, the what are you you're identifying the asking her to identify the gold stone? Yep. The gold stone itself, when you identify it, it's it's inherently magical, but not in the same way like a magical item might be. Um, the identifying, you get, you pretty much are informed that you could use it as it's pretty much like a whetstone. So you could use it to 
sharpen your sword or whatever have you, um, and you would probably be able to get a slight bit of electricity added onto the sword for perhaps a minute or so. Hmm. Is it a one-use item? Uh, it's, it is a consumable. It's not one-use. So it has a number it's of got... charges, basically? Yeah, and it won't get charges back. Okay. You know what? I'm going to just toss it over Serena. Um, Sharpen your weapon with this before battle in the future. Um, okay. Does normally uh, identify says how many charges? Do we know how many charges? I'm going to say you get the feeling that it's probably about five charges. You have five uses with it. It'll add electricity to your blade. Okay. So lightning blade. Yeah, it's pretty much I just give, give you... Uh, I would almost give that to Lily if it's valid, because Serena... Because it's, <laughs> Lily already has, that. like, five elements on her sword. I know. Yeah, we don't need to add anything but else. Serena but Serena can call honestly, anything as well. She doesn't need I anything. know a lot of DMs that will say no stacking on that stuff, too. Would you Mystical allow the stuff. stacking of three different elements, Silver? I would allow it, because they are all from different sources. Okay. But I might argue that it would take up two charges to use on Lily's sword, because it's the flaming effect might ruin the stone. Yep. Okay, GM GM rolls. No, Serena will keep the stone. Let's be honest. There's like thirty <coughs> effects on that sword at this point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and there's rage. There's light. There's fire. There's ice. There's also crypt keep attacks. in mind that isn't technically a steel blade. It's nothing special, material wise. That blade should not be lasting as long as it has as much enchantment to go through it. We've so. probably taken care of that, Risu, when we were doing the crafting. It's still technically a steel blade. You would have to reforge it. It's probably reinforced blade. in the crafting. There, done. Don't worry about okay, it. That's better. <laughs> like you assume stuff that would have been taken care of because like, they didn't do this, but they would have obviously done it. All right, then. So, in the rest of the night as well, nothing really passes, and you can see that there's like. A few of the dwarves, like one of the dragonborn is up there working on harvesting up the uh, the thunderbird as the time goes on. And you can understand that it's taking them like a few days because this thing was huge. And like there's other people working on trying to draw salt out of the water so that they can like preserve it with jerky and such. And it's just a lot. It takes up most of the activity for the next several days as they head back to Redwall. And yeah, the Redwall Mountains. And outside of anything happening on your guys' part, I was going to move us to arriving at Union City. Maybe the only thing that a lot of my do is like try to use invisibility to have tell while she can probably get into captain's quarters. But she'd probably get stopped by party, so probably won't get very far. Probably. Like if you want to try, go ahead. Don't try, please. Don't. What are we doing now? Because Lily will escort her to the brig if she gets caught. Is she trying to sneak into engineering? No. She's trying to cast Captain invisibility on herself. The only reason she would is because she's actually wanting to know what those orders exactly were, who they were from before. <sighs> Fine, I won't do it. If party's going to be bad, objected to it. There's no point of me making enemy out of the entire party. Yeah, that's pretty much what would happen. But the honestly, entire boat would want to throw you overboard. We need to know who gave those orders, and he's not willing to give that information. I we think we're going to gonna find that out once we get to city. I'd rather know beforehand. I assume the uh, the Lily and Baron conversations can be done in the dock later on. Sure they can. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, I have I have no real complaints with that one way or the other. <laughs> well, if there's nothing Kalana can do, she's probably gonna stay in the corner in the bar and just stay drunk. <laughs> Honestly, uncomfortable here. Well, let's be honest, she's gonna be uncomfortable the entire time. Can Lily try to sell her, her cheater's deck of cards to one of the dwarves? She could try, persuasion. <laughs> I'm I'm looking for specifically one that is not lawfully aligned if that exists. Disadvantage. Okay. And you aren't able to really find one. 
Yay. That would fit what you would consider the criteria of properly selling the cards to. Hmm. Is there anything else that I have on me that I would want to do anything with? Probably not. Yeah, I think I'm good. Yeah. Give me one second. <laughs> All right. And this was probably the best map I could find, so bear with me. You eventually arrive one day at a city on the northern edge of the continent. Just pretend it's rotated and it's actually on the north. You know, there is actually a way to rotate the map. I know. I know. I just didn't do it. <clears throat> oh, wait. Hey, we're here. Yay. And you, fall, you sail in underneath this little area here, arriving in the take port on one of the docks. I need to grab the tokens for, like, everyone, and I need you. As we're Did sailing we in... Oh, wait. Hold on. I forgot. I wanted to have Serena check, like, maybe roll insight to see if there was any hint that the attack was uh, staged, or if we just pissed off some random wild creatures. You may. Okay. Oh, this, the event was totally staged. As we're oh. rolling in, uh, Lily's going to drink from the coffee pot of the Awakened. All right. Damn it. You get the feeling that it wasn't natural. You don't know much more beyond that. I'm okay. not seen. I need to see the Baron still. You know, we can make everyone have you full size for this. Ah. Giants! We're all giants! It's the Lily Pet here. City. Would Alana happen to know the general location that the Thunderbirds tend to live? Um, She would know that they tend to exist in the same areas that rocks do, which would be on the top of mountains and such. So can, yeah, she'll be like, yeah, it's totally was planned for that to happen. Can we really like, do it wouldn't be the strangest thing for it to end up out there, but it wouldn't be something that you would expect either. Yeah. <clears throat> can Lily roll nature on it? She may. And I get nothing. Yeah, you don't get anything useful out of that. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's, it's Super plane. Bird! I forgot how much freaking health the Baron has. Dear Lord. Put full on it back up to full. Is the Baron, like, level 7 he's, or 8 or he's something? He's level 6 or 7. 7, I believe. <laughs> I mean, he took 36 damage on the chin, and that wasn't enough to take him, take him uh, that to deal more than half his health and damage, so... Yeah, not that one. It's the wrong dwarf. Yeah. So many dwarves! Dwarves! Gotta find the right dwarf, which is this one. But yeah, you end up in um, Union City, which it's primarily a dwarf city. You can see it's kind of fortress-based. Most of the uh, people are down here in this walled area, well protected from everything else. Um, pulling into the dock, you see that there's a dock pretty much shaped specifically for this worship. And it kind of welcomes everyone as it comes in. Waiting for you in the docks, there is... I don't have a token for her. I apologize. There is a older-looking dwarf woman, and as you walk down the gangplank and onto the docks itself, you can see... you can The group, I assume, is walking next to the bear, and you can kind of hear him kind of, like, sigh a little bit. Out of character. Is still alive. Out of character. Don't lie. There's no such thing as dwarf woman. All right, so and lucky. he will conti and continue ignoring that comment completely. He will kind of sigh at this and like that old. That was out of character. I did specify out of character. And he will sigh and say that old crone is still alive. Who is this? That would be the high counselor Amber. Nice name. And she kind of just smiles at them as they all all walk up, and she kind of just. Raises her arms out as little as she was to hug, but like a kind of a welcoming gesture, not so much as a hug, but a welcoming gesture. Ah, uh, yes, welcome. So glad to see you again, Klaus. How have your time been? And he'll kind of just look down at her. Is this your doing that I'm here? And she'll nod. Anyone else going to jump in? Uh, sorry, I missed that. Uh, what was what was said? Um, you've met the High Counselor, which is a dwarf woman named Amber, and the Baron had asked her outright if it was her doing that he was there, and she said, and she nodded. 
Liz Serena's going... not going to do anything. She's not sticking her neck into this one. Liz yeah. is going to ask why. Just one word, why. Oh, well, there's a number of interesting things going on. Mostly that you are actually still there and how much land you've acquired. Now, I personally don't care if you don't have that much land. I, I remember how you were back in those days. If anyone's to rule, it's better you than most of the people I have to deal with on a daily basis. Though, the fact that you are there ruling is a question in of itself. When did your father die again? And the Baron is silent at this. Well, he's going to just kind of glance back at the Baron, but not say anything. What should it matter? Can I roll insight on, it? on the Baron? You may, <laughs> you may roll insight on that. Serena's going to do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a moment. <laughs> I'm just going to do it too. I just have to ask you to pull up on my damn page. A lot is not even going to try. <laughs> Alright, now. Fulana <sighs> gets the feeling that there is very obviously a history between these two, and that the questioning remark of it isn't. is interesting in a way because you almost get the feeling of not so much as how his father died, but when it was, like she asked. Time being the key point of all of this. And then I, then eh. she will say it out loud. Honestly, it shouldn't matter. He's currently ruling due to necessity. Without that necessity, he wouldn't be ruling. And you know that, yes, of course, that's at least part of the reason I'm still here, but... Well, I would like to talk about the glory days. I have not spoken to your father in over a hundred years. A hundred years. And with that, she'll, say, she'll then turn to the assembled group. Now then, if you are all so... I thank you all for escorting this fine gentleman here, and I'm sure that we'll be able to offer plenty of places to take care of you, though. If you don't mind, we need to speak to him privately within the council chambers. Lily's we are his speak up guard. And, Lily's going to speak no. up and say, uh, I'm sorry, I have been uh, I have been sent by my father, the Viscount of Haven, directly to aid the Baron. Um, unless he tells me to leave, I would and prefer to he'll hold her. he'll hold his hands up and kind of silence everyone. No, it's fine. You all just remain in the area and Check into various things if you can. It's best if we. It's best if I follow her. Lily's going to hand him one of the sending stones, and say, oh, no. "Take this, just in case you need us." I will have to go alone. Hold on. He'll look mind. at it. Never mind. What? The other one is back in Ashenport. Yeah. You could have I mean. asked for it before you left. To be honest. Well, no. It's better to get just in case there needs to be a message sent to us. It's better to have uh, one yeah. in Ashenport. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. No, and no, no, no. it'll look back at the group of sin. I'll speak to you again when I can. Just let's not worry about this too much right now. Well, I was going to ask, where's the nearest inn? I kind of want to just rest after that trip. And she'll kind of... And, and the Amber will kind of nod. The, ah, yes, of course. Don't worry. I'm sure one of the fine gentlemen here will be able to assist you. Now then, I believe we should be on our way. And both she and the Baron will go off. And... I'm going to move into this layer. One of the uh, dwarf soldiers you're with is called Ford, and he will lead you to a nearby inn where you can all rest and everything of the sort. Alon is immediately just going to go collapse on a bed. Before the soldier walks away, if, if you don't mind me asking, what's your personal opinion on Amber? <sighs> on the own crone? Yeah, well... She's been a fine ruler when times have been harsh, though she doesn't really take things in her own hands this often. I don't even remember the last time she did, well, outside of that great invasion. Hmm. Uh, what time of day is it? I'm going to say it's afternoon, but it's early afternoon. Lily's going to ask what what's in the city, like what if he can uh, give him a, a verbal tour of what's in the city. Uh, not that much, to be honest. We have the military's training arena. Uh, what else would interest you? There's a few shops here and there. 
This is mostly a fortress, miss. We don't have a lot for travelers. We don't get travelers often. If you wanted more amenities, you'd have to go all the way down to Redwall. To be just safe in case something does happen, because I'm not putting it past nature at this point. If we do have to rescue the Baron, where is the council chamber? <laughs> Does you Do you actually say it like that? Because nature seems to be out for him, yes. I will say that. <laughs> and the dwarf will kind of like, he'll look at you strangely and kind of laugh. You expect you'd have to rescue him. That's a foolish thought. He's in the safest place in the area, to be honest. And be to be honest, honest, it's only the temporary council halls here. She only wished to meet him immediately. I expect they'll be heading down to Redwall themselves within a day or so. You'll probably be there to join them. Well, he's just going yeah. to mutter towards Falana, hold your tongue. For the love of all that's, all that's holy, you're an elf yeah. in the dwarf town. You are in the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. What are you doing? And the dwarf will, once right. again, he'll look at Falana for a bit longer, and then he'll kind of dismiss oh, himself and walk back. away. <laughs> and as he walks away, muttering in Dorvish, he, you, um, Lily can understand him saying, Damn, Delph. In Dorvish. Damn, Dorf. <laughs> oh, good. We can insult each other in our right tongues. Perfect. Couldn't understand your damn language anyway. <laughs> and in Elven, it's not my fault that you're so far below intelligence that you couldn't understand anything Can Lily else. do a grapple check on Falana? <laughs> yes, you may. This is, actually, uh, Serena does have a spell slot fa filled. I'm just uh, available. I'm just gonna get use it to get to to get silence. Lily's All going right. to grab Falana, and if there's a wall nearby, probably shove her against it and say, "You hold your tongue in this city, or I will stick my blade through your neck." Are we clear? You will get our Baron killed if you keep talking like this. <sighs> Our Baron is a bit of a stretch, but you'll most likely get every one of us any every one of us jailed. And I have too many important things to do to bother bother sitting in jail just because an elf decided to talk talk badly in a dwarven town. Fine. Just let me, say anything? <laughs> fine. When they slit your throats in your sleep, just let me know. Liz just gonna release her. We have to lock you up. We will. She's gonna storm out the end. So much party conflict. Well, that's what happens when you have an elf that constantly tries to piss off the dwarves when we're in the middle of a dwarven town. Yeah, Falana, th the granddaughter of Hitler. <laughs> did um Lily storm out? You say, or did she go yes. into the inn? She's she out. went out. Yeah. All right, I think Azul would probably follow her. Make sure she doesn't get. She doesn't want to keep Alana company as she gets over her seasickness. Actually, no. Yeah, Azul will keep Alana company. Mar, Mar will can, follow. Yeah, Mar can follow. <laughs> uh, Serena, Serena pats Mar on the shoulder as she goes, goes saying, "I'm sorry, you have to play babysitter." Mar will kind of chuckle. I'm paid far better than any babysitter I know. <laughs> well, well, Lily has many special needs for it. And has more special needs than any baby that I've ever known. And she'll kind of just smile softly at that as she goes out to follow. Hey. I'm going to purchase the strongest alcohol they have. I'm going to spend the entire time drinking. <laughs> yep. <sighs> constitution yep. checks. Or constitution oh, checks. Oh, plenty of them, but I think I'm actually going to end it off here for now. I don't <laughs> think she cares. <laughs> yeah, I think we're probably going to end it off here for now because... I, we could be heading down into Redwall itself, and I have ways for that, and I have methods for that, but I'm even I'm winging it even more than I am right now at that point. And I'm winging it pretty hard right now. You're winging yeah. it every session. Lily was basically going to go find shops, so I'll, I'll, you might want to take some time and set those yeah, up. Yeah, I'll take something. some time to set up the shops and everything else, so I don't actually have to wing I that. I just heard that as Lily was going to go find shops, and I was like, just go find the Alana. The <laughs> right. But yeah, this was... a. About what I expected out of the session. I I learned what not re like how that encounter didn't work. I'm not sure I would change it to make it work better, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. All right, want to end off the stream? Yeah, I think we can end off the stream now. All right, thank you, everyone.